All right, this video is on integral exponents and scientific notation. So let's go ahead and get started. We've got quite a bit to cover. So let's look at a definition here. It says, if A is a non-zero real number and N is a positive integer, then A to the negative N equals 1 over A to the N. And then we have, if A and B are non-zero real numbers and M and N are integers, then A over B to the negative M is equal to B over A to the M, and A to the negative M over B to the negative N equals B to the N over A to the M. And that looks like an N there. That should be an R. All right. So... The, these two uh, rules here, what they're doing is they're showing you how to make a negative exponent positive. Because when, when you simplify these things, you want your exponents to be positive. And that's what these are doing. They're showing you how to, to, to get positive exponents. And as far as these rules go, uh, this one right here and this one right here there's no need to remember them now I'm going to show you something that's a little bit that I think is easier for you to make your exponents positive okay and and that would go without you having to you know you won't have to memorize those things so as far as these two go that I have circled I wouldn't remember I wouldn't worry about memorizing them now this one however I would know that one uh, basically what this one's doing is if you have a fraction and it's raised to an exponent you see a over b if I take the reciprocal of that remember the reciprocal is when you flip the fraction so if I if I flip the fraction what it does is it changes the sign of the exponent okay so you can see here I have a over b to the negative m and then if I take the reciprocal of this fraction it changes this the sign of the exponent in this case it changes it from negative to a positive okay and and as far as these two I'm going to show you as we're working the examples an easy way to do these without having to memorize those uh, formulas all right so so here we have some examples to do it says simplify each expression now this is the way I like to I like to do these now I mean if you you know j just bear with me through the video uh, the, the way I'm showing you this at first it might I don't know if it might seem awkward or uh, you might not really understand you may not catch on what I'm doing when I'm making the exponents positive but just keep watching the video and it's going to get easier and easier as we go okay and it'll make more and more sense all right so let's let's look at this one so I want to multiply all these well when I when I multiply these the the first thing I want to do is is I want to get all the exponents to be positive okay before I multiply so so what I can do here is I can look at this as being a fraction J just just remember Whenever you see a number like this, say the number 5, you, you can always write it over 1. That goes back to like when you were, you know, multiplying fractions or adding fractions or something like that. If you had something like 5 uh, times 2 thirds and you went to multiply those, what did you do a lot of times? You just put that over 1, right? And then you multiplied the numerators, multiplied the denominators. And that's all I'm doing there. I'm, I'm just putting it over 1. Okay? And then the same thing goes for this. I'm putting this over 1. So all I'm doing right now is I'm making the exponents positive. Now, yeah, we had that property at the first of the video. There was that property that showed us how to make the exponents positive. But, but let's look at this. In order to change the sign of the exponent, all you have to do is move, move this 
across the fraction bar. Anytime you move something across the fraction bar, it changes the sign of the exponent. So this 3 to the negative 1, if I I'll move that across the fraction bar. And this 5 to the negative 2, I'll move that across the fraction bar. So that's going to give me, so if I take the 3 to the negative 1 and I move it across the fraction bar, that's going to give me 1 over 3 to the positive 1. It changes the sign of that exponent times, and then I move the 5 to the negative 2 across the fraction bar. That's 1 over 5, and it's going to change this sign, so 1 over 5 squared, and then times 10 squared. All right. Now, let's go ahead and, and multiply, but before we do that, let's take care of the exponents. And so that's going to be 1 third times 1 over 25 times, and then 10 squared is 100. And now I'm just, now just multiplying. So we can see that 100, that's over 1. And so let's cancel. So that's going to cancel with this. I'm left with a 4 and a 1. And so this is going to leave me with 4 thirds when I'm multiplying. And this is your answer. All right, let's do the next one. Now on this one, I have a fraction inside the parentheses. Okay, I have a fraction inside the parentheses. And it's raised to a negative power. Now remember, remember I went over this one. I said I would remember that one. So all we have to do is take the reciprocal of the fraction. And so that's going to be... 3 over 2, and that's going to be to the positive 3. Okay? And so this is going to give me what? 3 halves to the third. Well, that's just 3 halves times 3 halves times 3 halves. And that's going to give me 3 times 3 times 3. That's 27. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So I get 27 over 8. All right, next one. All right, so my exponents are negative. Okay, my exponents are negative. Now remember, I told you when you move something across the fraction bar, it changes the sign of the exponent. So I've got a negative exponent here. I've got a negative exponent here. So let's move the 6 to the negative 2. We'll move that across the fraction bar, and this 2 to the negative 3, I'll move that across the fraction bar. And so that's going to give me 2 cubed. I'm moving it up to the numerator. And the 6 to the negative 2, I'm moving it down to the denominator. All right. And so this is going to give me 8. That's 2 cubed over 36. Okay. I'm sorry. Close that back up. All right, so, and then we get 8 over 36, and we can simplify that. Uh, that is going to give us 2 ninths. All right, so let's look at the next one. I got 1 half to the negative 3 times 12 to the negative 2. So first, let's work on making the exponents positive. So I'm going to, this 12 to the negative 2, I'm going to look at that as being over 1. All right. So as far as this goes, I've got a fraction inside parentheses raised to a negative power. So I'm going to take the reciprocal of 1 half, and the reciprocal of 1 half is 2, and since I took the reciprocal, that changes the sign of the exponent, times, and then this one, I'm going to move this across the fraction bar. All right, so that's going to give me times 1 over 12 squared. All right. And so now I've got what? 8 times 1 over 144. 
and then I multiply. So I can look at that as being 8 over 1. And so that's going to give me 8 over 144. And then if I reduce that fraction, that is going to give me 1 over 18. All right. All right, so hopefully all this is making sense. And, and let me say this, as far as this moving these across the fraction bar, you know, right now on, on the problems that I've worked right now, it may seem like, well, you know, I don't, I don't think I really need to do that. I think it might be easier uh, using the, the, these properties up here that we learned, you know, this and this. Well, that may be the case on these, but we're gonna work, we'll work some in a minute where it's going to be a lot easier to do what I'm showing you. Okay, so just just bear with me. All right, definition, uh, we got a definition zero exponent. If A is a non-zero real number, then A to the zero is equal to one. So all that's doing is that's just telling you that anything raised to the zero power is one. All right, and then we have rules for exponents, all right? Rules for integral exponents. So we have a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n. So what this is saying, if you're multiplying, exp and you have exponents, and you're multiplying, and the bases are the same. See, we have, see here we have, we have a base a, and this is base a. So if those two are the same and you have exponents and you're multiplying, you just add the exponents. This is a to the m plus n. And then if you're dividing and you have like bases, then you subtract the exponents. This one, a to the m raised to the n, that one just tells us we multiply exponents. And then this property and this property, these two, they're pretty much, I think they pretty much go together. All this is saying is that if you have factors inside of parentheses, however many factors you have inside the parentheses, all this means is each one of these you raise to the exponent outside. See? See, so I got the AB, so that's just A to the N, B to the N. And it doesn't matter if it's a fraction, that's A to the N over B to the N. All right. So let's look, let's look at some problems here where we're simplifying these things. So simplify each expression. Now, just remember when you're simplifying these things, in order for them to be simplified, your exponents have to be positive. All right. So let's just multiply. So I've got 3 times negative 4. That's negative 12. And then you can see here I've got like bases. I'm multiplying. So I'm going to add the exponents. So that's x to the negative 2 plus 2. And then I have like bases here with the y. So I'm going to add the exponents. So that's going to be y to the 3 plus negative 5. Now, notice in this problem, I didn't do like I did in the previous problems. In the previous problems that I worked up here, I changed, I made all my exponents positive before I multiplied. Okay? But down here, notice, notice I didn't do that. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't worry about making these exponents positive before I multiplied them. And, and, and you don't want to do that. And, and let me explain. Well, if you notice here, I've got a negative exponent and I've got a negative exponent. So the first thing you might think of is, well, let me go ahead and make those exponents positive. But no, you don't want to do that. Because when you're simplifying these things, do, do you see how I have x to a power times x to a power? And I can use this property here, all right? If, if when you're simplifying these things, if you can perform one of these properties here, don't worry about changing your exponents to positive. Do everything you can with these rules of exponents first. Do everything you can, and then when you... And then when you can't apply any of these properties, 
then make your exponents positive. I'll explain that more when we get to some more complicated problems and, and it'll make more sense. Okay. All right. But, but what I want to point out up here is if you notice like in this first problem here, see this right here is your first problem. See, I couldn't do any of these. I couldn't perform any of these exponential properties here in this first problem. See, I don't have like bases anywhere or anything like that. So go ahead and make my exponents positive. But, oh, but see down here in this problem, I did have like bases. So I could multiply and add my exponents. So I don't worry about making them positive just yet. All right. So now we've got what? Negative 12 times x to the 0, negative 2 plus 2, times y to the 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2. And so this is negative 12 times, and x to the 0 is 1, times y to the negative 2. And then that's what? Negative 12 y to the negative 2. Okay. So I've done everything I can. So you see, None of these properties here apply anymore. There's nothing else I can do with this negative 12 y to the negative 2. There's nothing else I can do with these rules of exponents. Okay, so now that there's nothing else I can do, now let's make the exponents positive. So I'm going to look at this as being over 1. I need to make this exponent positive. So I'm going to move it across the fraction bar. Remember, whenever you move something across the fraction bar, it changes the sign of the exponent. And so that's going to give me negative 12 over y squared. And there's your answer. See, so I have this y to the negative 2. I moved it across the fraction bar, and it changes the sign of the exponent. All right, let's look at the next one. All right, so here... Like I said, I'm not going to worry about the negative exponents right now. Not until the end, okay, until I've simplified everything. So on something like this, I have like bases with the A. I have like bases with the Bs. And so that tells me I can subtract the exponents. But in this problem, notice this 2 and this 6 cancel. I'm left with 3 and 1. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm not going to worry about it anything else except for simplifying those uh, the numbers. All right. So 2 goes into 6 three times. I simplified that and rewrote the rest of the problem. Now let's do the, the rules of exponents. So remember, when you have like bases, you subtract exponents. So this is negative 3 a to the 5 minus 7, right? 5 minus 7 times b to the negative 1 minus negative 3. See, the negative 1 minus the negative 3. Like bases, dividing, subtract exponents. And so this is going to give me negative 3, a to the negative 2, b squared. Negative 1 minus negative 3 is positive 2. All right, so now there's nothing, out, there's nothing else I can do with those exponential rules. So now let's make our exponents positive. So I'm going to make this look like a fraction. And remember, in order to change the sign of an exponent, you got to move it across the fraction bar. So this a to the negative 2, I'm going to move it across the fraction bar. So this is negative 3 b squared over a squared. See, the b squared stays up there because the exponent on the b is positive. So we just leave it there. All right, so how about this one? All right, so let's multiply. Okay, so I'm multiplying. So that's going to be what? Negative 45, the negative 5 times 9. And then I've got like bases on the A, like bases on the B. So I add the exponents. So that's A to the negative 7 plus negative 2 times B to the negative 5 plus 8. 
And so this is going to give me negative 45 a to the negative 9, negative 7 plus negative 2, times b to the negative 5 plus 8, which is 3. Make it look like a fraction. And then this a to the negative 9, move it across the fraction bar. And so this is going to give me negative 45 b cubed over a to the ninth. And there's my answer. All right, so how about this one? All right. So in this one, oh, look there. I've got, I've got variables up in my exponents. This is negative 3x raised to the a minus 5 times y to the negative 3 raised to the fourth. All right. So you see how I have these different factors here? in parentheses raised to a number that's that's this property right here see these factors raised to a number so I just raise each factor in there to that exponent and so this is going to give me what negative 3 to the fourth x raised to the a minus 5 raised to the fourth y to the negative 3 raised to the fourth okay I just raised each one to this fourth power out here all right and so now you see you see this and you see this well that's that property a to the m raised to the n is equal to a to the m times n I multiply them so this is going to give me, and I can go ahead and raise that to the fourth, negative 3 raised to the fourth, that's what, 81? Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. And then this is x to the 4 times a minus 5, and then this is y to the negative 12. Negative 3 times 4 is 12. And then what I'll do here is this 81x to the 4a minus 20 times y to the negative 12. All I did is I just distributed the 4. Okay. So now there's, there's nothing else I can do. I can't, you do. I can't perform any more of those rules of exponents. So now let's make my exponents positive. And so I look at this as being over 1. And so this y to the negative 12, I move that across the fraction bar. And so that's going to be 81x to the 4a minus 20. This is an a here. Over y to the 12th. And there's your answer. All right. All right, so let's take a look at this one. All right, so I've got all this stuff here in parentheses, raised to the negative 3. Now, as far as this problem goes, there's, there's actually a, a couple of ways that you could do this one. And, you know, how do you want to do it? I don't know. What, what's, which, which way is easier? Uh, the way I'm going to show you, sometimes it may be easier to do it this way. Sometimes it may be easier to do it the other way. All right? But the way that I'm going to show you, I think it, it works the best. So the, the first thing that I like to do is if I have a bunch of stuff in parentheses raised to a power, is I like to go ahead and just simplify what's ever inside the parentheses first, if you can. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So this is 3 a to the 2m minus 1 minus negative 3m over 2, and all that is to the negative 3. So you can see here I have a like base of a, and so I subtract the exponents. So that's a to the 2m minus 1, right, 2m minus 1 minus this exponent, negative 3m. That's all I did, all right? And so this is going to give me 3a to the 2m minus 1 plus 3m over 2. 
So all I did there is I wrote this, the minus negative 3m as plus 3m. Whoop, I'm sorry. And I left off that negative 3 power, didn't I? And so now that's just going to be 3a to the 5m minus 1 over 2 raised to the negative 3. All right. So all I did is just use those rules here, subtract exponents, and then I just went through and basically from this step to this step to this step, now pretty much all I did was just simplify that, combine like terms. All right. Now, there's nothing else I can do inside the parentheses. So what I'm going to do now is each factor inside the parentheses, I'm going to raise to that negative 3 power. And so that's going to give me 3 to the negative 3, a to the 5m minus 1 raised to the negative 3 over 2 to the negative 3. All right, so now this is like that a to the m raised to the n. I multiply exponents here. And so this is going to be 3 to the negative 3, a to the negative 3 times 5m minus 1 over 2 to the negative 3, which is going to be 3 to the negative 3, a to the negative 15m plus 3 over 2 to the negative 3. So all I did from this step to this step See this? I just multiplied the exponents. See, negative 3 times this. And then from this step to this step, I just distributed the negative 3. All right. Now, when you look at it, there's, there's nothing else I can do. There, there's, there, there's, there's none of those rules of exponents that apply. So now, I just make everything, I make all my exponents positive. So this 3 to the negative 3, I move that across the fraction bar. This 2 to the negative 3, I move it across the fraction bar. Let me draw it, moving it here. All right. And so that's going to be 2 cubed, a to the negative 15m plus 3 over 3 cubed. All right. And I know what you're probably thinking. Why didn't I move this down? I'll explain that in a minute. All right. So now we've got 2 cubed, that's 8, and that's a to the negative 15m plus 3 over 27. And this is your final answer. All right, so now you're looking at this, and you, and you might be thinking, well, why didn't you move this term across the fraction bar? Because there's a negative there. Well... I don't know, I don't know if this exponent is positive or negative. Okay? Well, let's look. If m is equal to zero, then we get negative 15 times zero plus three, right? And that's three. Well, if that's the case, the exponent's positive. You see that? If m is 1, then we get negative 15 times 1 plus 3, and that's what negative 12. That case, the exponent would be negative. But see, we don't know what m is, so we don't know if that exponent is positive or negative. So what, what you do when you have uh, variables up in your exponent, just leave them in the numerator. Okay, leave them in the numerator. All right, now let's look at this one. All right, so remember what I said, simplify everything inside the parentheses first, okay? Simplify all the stuff inside the parentheses first. And so we've got numbers here. First thing I like to do, three goes into each of those. I'm left with five and six. So that's going to leave me with five X to the negative two, Y to the ninth over six X squared Y cubed. And then that's raised to the negative two. So all I did, first step, just reduced my numbers. Okay, that's all I did. Now, let's apply, let's apply our exponent properties. So that's going to be 5x to the negative 2 minus 2, the negative 2 minus this 2, 
y to the 9 minus 3 over 6. And then all that is to the negative 2. Dividing, like bases, subtract. Okay, When you're dividing and you have like bases, you subtract your exponents. So now that's going to leave me with 5x to the negative 4, y to the 6th over 6. All right. And then that's all raised to the negative 2. Now, there's nothing else I can do inside the parentheses. So what I'm going to do now is raise each factor inside these parentheses to that negative 2 power. So that's going to be 5 to the negative 2, y to the... Now, let's, let's do something here. I multiply the exponents, right? Just like we did in some of the previous problems. So that's negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. Okay? And then I have y to the 6 times negative 2 is negative 12 over 6 to the negative 2. So all I did is I raised each one of those factors inside the parentheses to this exponent negative 2. All right, so now, is there any other rules that I can apply with the exponents? No, I'm at the end. So now, let's make our exponents positive. So, all right, so this needs to move across the fraction bar. This, I don't know why I keep hitting that, whatever that is. And then I move this across the fraction bar, and then I have to move this across the fraction bar. See, wherever the exponents are negative, you just move them across the fraction bar. And so this is going to be 6 squared y to the 8th over 5 squared. Whoop, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Look what I did. That should be an X. See that? I messed up right there. That should be an X. So let's erase this and do it again. All right, so the 6 to the negative 2 comes up. So that's 6 squared X to the 8th over 5 squared Y to the 12th. All right. And so now that's going to give us what? 36 X to the 8th over 25y to the 12th. And this is our answer. All right, so that's that's the stuff with uh, exponents, okay? And, and you know, when, when you're taking a college algebra class, this, this stuff that I'm going over right now is, it's in the, like, the prerequisite chapter in the books, in the college algebra books, this is meant to be like a review of all this stuff. Okay, if you're taking college algebra, it's assumed you know how to do this already. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going over it. So, so hopefully it makes sense. All right, so let's look at this. We've got, let's talk about scientific notation. So convert each number to standard form. Okay, so we want to go from uh, scientific notation to standard form. All right, so all we do, what, what I'll do here, let's just write down this number, 9.63, all right, times 10 to the 7th. So all this means is that I move the decimal place seven places to the right. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right. And you see where these little gaps are here? You add zeros there. And so this would be 9, 6, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so there's your number, 96,300,000. All right. Now let's look at this one. So let's write this number down, 2.3, and I've got times 10 to the negative 6, all right? That's a negative exponent. When it's negative, you move the decimal that many places to the left. 
and so it's negative 6, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right there. And you add your zeros here, and so this would be 0 .00000023, zero 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 and there's your answer there, and that's the answer on the first one. All right, so that's going from standard form to, to scientific notation. Now let's look at this one. All right, so for this, we want to go from standard form to scientific notation. Okay, standard form to scientific notation. All right, so, well, the decimal is right here. All right, so you've got to move the decimal to the right of the first digit of the first non-zero digit, okay, to the right of the first non-zero digit. So how many places do I have to move it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I had to move it eleven places. And so this is 5.8 times ten, and how many places did I move it? 11. So that would be to the positive 11. And then for this one, that's going to be what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places. And so that's going to be 6.83 times 10 to the, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's to the negative 5. All right. So I hope that I hope that made sense. That's not bad, converting all that stuff. Now, let's look at performing operations on these uh, on scientific notation. So I've got two numbers written in scientific notation, and I want to multiply them together. All right? So multiply the numbers. Well, that's 20. And then the 10 to the 13th, times 10 to the negative 9, that's going to be times 10 to the 13 plus negative 9, which that's going to be 20 times 10 to the, what was that, to the 4th? Yeah, to the 4th. All right. Now, when we multiply these, we want to get them back in. We want it back in scientific notation. And you can see this 20 here, that's not scientific notation. So what we're doing now is we're looking at just this. Just forget about this times 10 to the fourth. Take that 20 and convert it to scientific notation. So there's your decimal. So I move it one place to the left. So that can be written as 2 times 10, and I moved it one place, so that's 10 to the first. So all I've done is I've written 20 in scientific notation, and then I have what? Times 10 to the fourth. And now what I have to do is multiply these together, so that's going to be 2 times 10 to the 1 plus 4, which is 2 times 10 to the fifth. And there's my answer. All right, let's look at the next one. All right, so I've got 1.2 times 10 to the negative 9 over 4 times 10 to the negative 7. So the, the first thing you want to do is take the 1.2 divided by 4, and that's going to give you 0.3. Okay, I just, I just punched that in my calculator. Okay. And that's times 10 to the negative 9. See, I've got like bases minus negative 7. So like bases, I subtract exponents. And so this is going to give me what? 0.3 times 10 to the negative 2. So now what I've got to do is this... See this point 0.3? Well, we're in the same boat that we were when we had this 20. So the point 0.3 here, 
I'm going to have to take just this point 3, forget about the rest of it, take the point 3, convert it to scientific notation. So I've got to move this, what, one place to the right. So that's going to give me 3 times 10 to the negative 1. So all I've done, this point 3, is I wrote it in scientific notation. But then I have times 10 to the negative 2. And then when I multiply those, I get 3 times 10 to the negative 1 plus negative 2, which is equal to 3 times 10 to the negative 3. And there's your answer. All right, so how about this one? All right, so that looks like a that looks like a tough problem, doesn't it? All right, so first thing we want to do, let's convert everything to scientific notation. Okay, convert everything to scientific notation. So here I've got my decimal right here. So that's going to be one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine places. So that's two times ten to the ninth. All right. And remember, that's still all of that raised to the third power. And then I have what? Times. Now I've got to convert that to scientific notation. So that's what? One, two, three, four, five. I had to move it five places. So that's nine times 10 to the negative five. And then this is over. And now let's convert this one. That's going to be what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's going to be six times. 10 to the eighth. All right, so we're, we're getting there. So now let's go ahead and do this exponent here. So all I'm doing here is see each one of these factors here. I'm just raising that to the third power. That's all I'm doing. So this, I've got two cubed. So two cubed is eight times 10 to the, all right, think of, think a minute. What was that going to be? 10 to the what? 10 to the 27. Remember, you multiply the exponents, all right? And that's going to be times 9 times 10 to the negative 5 over 6 times 10 to the 8. So now, before to simplify some more, let's multiply the numerator together. Multiply the two terms in the numerator. So 8 times 9, that's 72, right? And that's going to be times 10 to the 27 plus negative 5 over 6 times 10 to the 8. All right, and so this is going to be 72 times 10 to the 22nd over 6 times 10 to the 8th. All right, so now, well, let's see, we got what? 12, all right, 76 goes into 72 times 10 to the what? 22 minus... 8, you see that, 22 minus 8, like bases, subtract the exponents, 6 goes into 72, 12 times, and so this is going to be 12 times 10 to the, what is that, 14, and then just like before, see the 12, I've got to rewrite the 12 in scientific notation, so I've got to move the decimal one place to the left, so that's going to be 1.2 times 10 to the first times 10 to the 14th. 
And so this is going to be 1.2 times 10. Add the exponents. 1 plus 14 is 15. And there's my answer. All right, so let's take a look at this last one here. This is just it's a word problem. All right, it, sa it says, if the radius of the Earth is approximately 6.38 times 10 to the third kilometers, and the radius of a grain of sand is approximately 1 times 10 to the negative 3 meters, then what number of grains of sand have a volume equal to the volume of the Earth? All right, so let's, let's look at that. So first, let's find the volume of the Earth. So the Earth is a sphere. So the volume, all right, is equal to four-thirds times pi times the radius cubed. That's the volume of the Earth, all right? So the volume is what? Four thirds pi times what? 6.38 times 10 to the third cubed. All right. That's the volume of the earth. And, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write this as so, so basically what you would do is you would cube. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and work it out. Let's go ahead and work it out. I'll do a couple steps. So we get four thirds pi times now 6.38 cubed. I've got a cube each one of those. So, so let's see, what do we get? 6.38 raised to the third. That is... 259.694072. And I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to write this as two, uh, 250. Now I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's make it a little, a little easier. 6.38 cubed times 4 times pi divided by 3. Okay, So that is 1 point, I'm sorry, not 1 point, that's going to be 1087, uh, well let's just write it as this. Okay, so, so how did I get this number? I did 6.38 to the third times pi times four, hit equal on my calculator, and then hit divided by three and gives you that number. It's, it's a decimal. I just rounded it to the nearest integer. All right. And then that's times 10 to the ninth. Because remember here, you multiply exponents. And then we'll have to convert this to scientific notation, just, just like we did in the previous problems. Okay, so basically what we get is we get 1.09 times 10 to the 12th. All right, so I just did 1.09, just rounded this 8 to a 9. All right, so that's, that's the volume. That's the volume of Earth in kilometers. All right, so now we've got to look at the grain of sand. Okay, sand is approximately one, time, 1 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. That's the radius of a grain of sand. All right, so notice that the sand is in meters, and they gave us the measurement of the radius of the earth in kilometers. So let's, let's, convert, let's convert the radius of sand into kilometers. Well... We've got one kilometer is equal to 10 to the, is equal to 10 to the third meters. All right. So the radius of a grain of sand is going to be, 
see, radius of sand is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 3 over 10 cubed. All right. And so this is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 3 minus 3, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 6. All right. So this is the radius of a grain of sand in kilometers. All right. So now we've got to use the formula. V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed, which is equal to 4 thirds pi times the radius, which is this right here, 1 times 10 to the negative 6 cubed. All right. So, so what are we doing now? Well, we're finding the volume of a grain of sand. And, and I'm not going to go through simplifying this. I'm just going to write the answer down. It's what we did up here. All right. So that actually comes out to be 4.19 times 10 to the negative 18. So how many, how many grains of sand would there be in the volume in the earth? So all you do there is you divide the volume of the earth by the volume of a grain of sand, and that would give you the answer. So that's going to be this number divided by this number. So that's going to be 1.09 times 10 to the 12th over, and that's going to be 4.19 times 10 to the negative 18. And then we simplify this, all right? And and we've simplified, you know, we did one of these in the videos, but let's just go ahead and do it again. So 1.09 divided by 4.19, and that gives us 0 0.26, 2 2.6014319.8. I'm just going to leave it as this. And that's going to be times 10 to the 12 minus negative 18. All right. So now what we have is we need to convert this to scientific form, the 0 0.260. So I'll move it one place to the right. So that's going to be 2.6 times 10 to the first. I moved it one place times 10 to the, what is that? 30. All right. And I'm sorry. And this is actually not one. That would actually be negative one, wouldn't it? All right. And so this is going to give me 2.6 times 10 to the 29th. And that's, that's how many grains of sand. All right. So if you hung around until the end, wonderful. Hope you learned something. I uh, hope you feel smarter now. So that's all of this video. Uh, check out my other videos. Uh, give me a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.